Again, I want to thank everyone for taking time out of your busy day to be here. Uh, about two years ago, um, I had a conversation with my boss, Anton Zajac, who I'll, who I'll uh, introduce in just a moment. And uh, we were having a conversation about some findings that we were seeing coming out of our labs. And namely, we were seeing what we now de describe as social engineering and techniques that are more behavioral related um, versus uh, technical orientation. And it got us into a conversation about the importance of education, um, that people don't know what they don't know, and how do we overcome this issue. You can have the best technology available, but if you um, can't prevent people from doing things that they don't know they shouldn't be, that, that, that becomes a huge problem for um, people that do provide technology in a layer defense. So uh, um, given Anton's background in education, we started talking about defining a curriculum, a training that uh, we could provide to all citizens in San Diego. Um, the idea would be is it's a community give back, an hour, hour and a half of what I call basic cybersecurity training. And um, that would uh, be the opportunity to, to really uh, holistically train citizens in our community, both in business and at home. What, uh, one of the things that, that has spawned is this project, uh, what we call the Secure Inner City Model City Project. And this project was hatched, um, I like to say, over a glass of red wine in Sacramento. Um, uh, there was a group that consisted of folks from um, DHS. I don't think they were drinking red wine that night. Um, uh, folks from the state of California, Mark Weatherford, um, uh, who's the CISO. Um, several other folks from security background and, and our partners from the National Cybersecurity Alliance. And someone mentioned, I think it was Amy Larson Kirkpatrick, who's here today, that we should consider this idea of creating a model city. That if we could find a city where we can, in a sense, conduct a series of small experiments, uh, educational um, outreach, awareness, training, preparedness, and that kind of spawned a whole discussion. And, and uh, being an old sales guy, I raised my hand and said, well, here's the 10 reasons I think that San Diego could make sense for this. And that um, led to a, a visit from the National Cybersecurity Alliance, which works closely with DHS and their educational outreach. And um, they were willing to partner, have been very active in helping us at the kind of high level domain expertise, understand organizing principles for a group of stakeholders. They visited uh, in last December, uh, we, we met with about 29 different stakeholders across the city, starting with the mayor's office, congressional office, um, nonprofit organizations like the Security Network, Tech America. We met with law enforcement, the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, San Diego PD, the sheriff, um, businesses, both on the defense side, um, companies like SAIC, uh, BAE. Um, and we found the common logic and what, at the end of the day, everyone was willing to step up and say, we're committed to this idea of trying to, to model what a secure, um, what a secure city would look like. So it's a project that's being uh, defined and refined. It may be, in a sense, a problem that we never completely solve, but I think there is a consensus amongst about 200 stakeholders now that uh, we can make a difference. I also think that people in San Diego see the unique um, relational uh, opportunity that, or, or um, um, way that San Diegans are. Um, it's a very collaborative set of people both across the public and private domain spaces. So a very collaborative business community, the ability to collaborate with a law enforcement community which is itself very collaborative. So it's really um, allowed us, I think, to move um, this project down the field um, even faster than any of us thought that would be possible.